What's up YouTube? I'm the nice one and today we are making a another weapon model. Kind of like what we did before with our sword. This time we are going to make a yeah, let's make a battle axe. Uh, again, I'm just making a bunch of equipment for some of the characters because I need to make this stuff for the animated series anyway. So, I figured I might as well kind of walk you through how I'm doing it. Anyway, uh, I'll stop rambling and uh, let's just get straight into it, okay? Cool. Okay, let's model a battle axe. So, let's open Maya. And uh, let's start with our classic box modeling. Okay, so I'm gonna try and call out all the shortcuts I'm using as I go through it. And uh, yeah, so hopefully you can follow along. So let's go space, we'll go create. Let's create a poly primitive. Let's make a cube. Yeah, okay. Now let's click R for scale, bring it down to about this. Yeah, it's probably good. And then maybe scale it up along the Y axis as well. Cause this will represent our handle. Okay, great. I like that. Now let's switch to edge mode. Select this edge. Let's turn off our symmetry for now. Uh, select this edge. Control, right click, edge ring utilities to edge ring and split. Let's do the same thing here. Control, right click, edge ring utilities to edge ring and split. Okay, great. Now let's switch to top view for a second. Uh, you know, actually, this is how we'll do it. Uh, let's select this one. Turn on our symmetry Z. Yeah, turn our symmetry Z, go to top view, and yeah, space out to top view, and let's go W for position. And let's just do this because what we want to do is round out our uh, axe a little bit. So we're going to try and keep it as low poly as possible. Um, we'll see how it goes. Switch over to X object X symmetry now and go W for position. And let's position this out like that. Okay, great. So I think that's looking good so far. Uh, let's select face mode. Let's select these faces and we'll go control E for extrusion and we will extrude up just a tiny bit Just like that and we'll actually leave it. So Q to deselect. Now let's select these bottom ones as well And we'll go control E again and extrude down to just about that. Yeah, that looks good too And uh, yeah, deselect again. Now let's go into edge mode. Let's select this edge control right click to edge ring, to edge ring and split, to drop a loop right here. And let's do the same right here. Control, right click, to edge ring utilities, to edge ring and split. Okay, amazing. Now let's select this edge. Let's go R for scale. And let's just scale it up a little bit like that. Maybe even scale it up a little bit like this as well. Okay, cool. Let's do the same thing for this bottom edge, double clicking it. You can even go into top view and then switch over to wireframe shading mode and go scale and let's scale this up like that and maybe like this just so that they are even on both ends okay yeah great yeah okay cool we got a nice little uh, handle going on right here uh, let's keep moving forward so to do that we will go face let's select these faces we'll go control e for an extrusion again this time we'll go up a tiny bit deselect select the faces again control e this time q to deselect the extrusion but still have the face selected and go R for scale. And let's bring these faces in like that so that we're actually scaling in the faces along the Y axis plane. Um, basically kind of making, uh, yeah, kind of like a nested face inside this one. Okay, and that looks good so far. Now let's go E, Control E to extrude, just like that. And uh, let's go Control E one more time. And you will see why I do that in a minute. And Q to deselect, Control E one more time and go up maybe a bit higher. Control E one more time, do this. And Control E one more time and let's go back up really much higher. All right, great. So this is our handle so far. And you see the reason I did that is just to add a little detail by select this entire face right here and we'll go Control E. And you know, we can either pull out on the handle like this, switch over to maybe uh, top view like this. Yeah, and you can probably do that. Q to deselect, R for scale. Maybe let's scale it up along the Z axis and scale it up here as well. Go back into this mode, object. Yeah, we can do that. Or we can go face. You know, actually what I wanna do is let's select these faces for a second. And let's see if we can position this up by going W. And let's just bring that up a little bit to make it a little more beefy. Uh, let's select these. 
So select the entire loop. So we can select the entire loop by selecting one face. I have object X symmetry turned on, which is why both of these are selected. Select one face and then double click. And then, sorry, select one face, double click, and then it should select the entire loop. Now select the entire loop, go W for position, and let's just bring that down just like that. Yeah, all right, great. Uh, now let's select this one. Let's transition this up a tiny bit more. Yeah, that looks good. Let's go face. Select this, select the entire loop like that, uh, making sure, yeah, making sure we have the entire loop selected. Go control E for extrusion. Now we can either pull out on this handle or we can go 0 0.05 on the thickness modifier and uh, we get this pretty much the same effect, whatever you're more comfortable with. Okay, great. So uh, I like how that's looking so far. It looks pretty cool. Uh, now let's continue and make the rest. Let's keep going here, okay? So let's select these faces, select these top faces a little bit, and we'll control E one more time. Maybe bring it to about there. Yeah, it looks, yeah, it looks pretty good. Go edge, select this edge, drop an edge loop right here, and you will see why I do that in just a minute. Let's select these faces. Let's do, how should we do this? We'll go control E, right? Bring this up, Q to deselect. Select the faces one more time, control E, this time Q to deselect, R for scale. Let's transition to top face and let's see if we can f scale this way up along the same plane as previously, right? Okay, looking kind of odd, but trust me, bear with me for a second. Let's maybe shift it up a little bit so it's not uh, intersecting too much with our other plane. Uh, let's maybe bring it down here, okay? Great, now let's go control E one more time and let's bring this way up all the way here. Yeah, great, I like how that's looking so far. Yeah, okay, cool, that's looking not too bad, right? Yeah, I like it. Um, now let's select this edge because actually this is gonna be the top part of the ax where the blade is going to come out. Um, and yeah, okay, great. So let's select this and let's go R for scale and maybe just scale it up a little bit, just like that. Go to top view, go to our top view, sorry. And maybe fix this up a bit so that things look a little more proportional. Yeah, okay, great, that's looking good so far. Yeah, I like it, I'm liking it. Um, okay, now let's go face, let's select these faces and let's see if we flatten it out how it turns out. If we flatten this out a little bit and if we flatten this out a little bit by pulling along the z-axis. We can do the same thing here. Maybe turn off object x symmetry, turn on object z to make sure we select these two. And we will flatten this out as well. And then flatten this out as well. So now we get it. we're back to kind of this cube shape, which looks nice. Okay, great. I'm liking how that's looking so far. And yeah, that looks pretty good so far. Now let's make uh, let's make a blade. So to do that, we will go edge mode, select this edge, control right click, edge ring utilities to edge ring and split. Uh, let's select this edge. So we can either do two, one of two things. We can either go we can either go space and go mesh tools slide edge, and use our middle mouse button to maybe position it like that. And then we can do the same thing: hold control, hold right click, two edge ring utilities, two edge ring and split, space mesh tools slide edge, and then bring this down to get this split. Or we can select this edge, go control B to bevel, and maybe in turn up the fraction so that they're equally um, apart distant from each other. So maybe something like, yeah, maybe something like that, maybe 0 0.7. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we can do 0 0.7. Yeah, you know what, well, let's go 0 0.8 because that's my lucky number. Perfect, yeah, okay, cool, I like it so far. Now let's go edge. We need to drop a few more edge loops. So to do that, we'll go right click, control edge ring and two edge ring and split, and we'll drop an edge loop right here, okay? Because this face right here is going to be where our blade is going to protrude out from. So now that we have the basic shape of the staff uh, created, let's go control E to extrude, and let's just pull this out like that. Yeah, let's do that. And then we can do one more thing. We can either go, we can go control E, 
to extrude again, like this. And then we can go edge, maybe select these edges, and just pull this way down to kind of make the shape of the blade that we want. Right? OK, yeah, I'm digging it so far. I, I think it's not too bad. Maybe we can even kind of pull this up a tiny bit. Let's go edge mode. You know what? Let's not pull that top edge first. Let's see if this works. Now that we have the general, now we've blocked out the general shape of the blade, let's select this and go Control B, OK, to bring up our bevel again. And let's increase the bevel. And then let's increase the segments to something like 3. Let's go 0.8 and 3. And that way we get a rounded, kind of like a nicer rounded uh, shape right there for the actual axe blade. I mean, you could turn it way up if you want a really smooth rounding, but we're going to try and keep this a little more low poly. Uh, you know what, let's keep it to 10. How about that? Yeah, sure. Let's keep it at 10. That's not too bad. Okay, great. Okay, cool. So now we got kind of nice, a rounded edge, rounded blade right there. Uh, looking pretty good so far. Looking pretty good in my opinion. Um, let's keep going. You know what? Actually, I'm gonna redo. I'm gonna undo that for one second. Yeah, I'm gonna undo that because what I'm gonna do now is actually I'm gonna lift this, and so that when I do this, Control B, we can actually, if I turn up the fraction a little bit to 0.8 and turn up the segments to 10. We actually get a rounded shape right here at the top of the blade and the bottom. So that looks a little nicer, right? In terms of battle axes. I mean, I could, I guess I could have made a double-sided axe. Mm, that would have been kind of cool. But you know what? We're already here. So let's just continue. Okay, great. So let's keep going. So let's go in edge mode. Let's drop an edge loop right here. And you know what? I want to drop an edge loop right here down the center. Now let's select this edge loop. We'll go space, mesh tools, slide edge, and let's, sorry, space, mesh tools, slide edge, middle mouse button, slide it close to the top, but not exactly, not exactly right at the top, okay? So maybe we need to transition to front view using our space, and let's see if we can get it. Basically what I'm trying to do is get the width of this, these faces to be about the same as these, right? So maybe select this, and maybe we can even rotate that a tiny bit. Maybe bring it in, rotate it like that, and maybe even scale it down. And you know what? We can leave it at that. Yeah, okay. And you will see why I'm doing that in just a minute. Now let's switch back to our preview mode here. Uh, so yeah, I think this is looking pretty good so far. Maybe what we want to do is extrude out here one more time. Go like that. Yeah, let's do that. And then... Let's do, let's do one thing. Let's make the actual blade of the ax here by going select that and we'll go control E and then we'll apply a thickness of 0 0.05 maybe. No, maybe 0 0.08. Oh, we can even go 0 0.1. How about 0 0.1? Uh, 0 0.1 is okay. Maybe not the best I've ever seen. It's okay. Um, it's okay. I think we can do a bit better. Maybe. 0.3. Yeah, it's a little too much now. 0.2. Yeah, sure. Let's do 0 0.2. Okay, great. Now, now that we got that kind of tip of the blade kind of piece, we can select these and maybe bring it up to make the actual kind of blade piece right here. We can even rotate this. Let's go into front view mode. Go into front view mode and maybe rotate this like that and bring it up like this, so that it's making more of a rounded shape. And we'll do the same thing for this face right here. And sorry, the way I'm switching between perspectives is by hitting space. So you can go space, and then you'll see the four options, and then I mouse over here, and then space back to see this front view. Now E for rotation, and let's rotate it like that. W for position, and let's just bring it down like this. Yeah, that's not bad. Sure, I like it. Okay, great, cool. And there you go. Now we got a nice little blade coming out. We can select the, these front faces, these faces that actually make the blade, maybe protrude it out a bit more. 
and maybe even uh, scale it in so that it makes kind of like a sharper blade. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, sure. Maybe even select these faces. Maybe what if we kind of scale that in a little bit? Yeah, and then maybe take these faces again, scale it in along the x-axis to make it really sharp. Yeah. Yeah, okay, great. And there we go. Now we got a cool kind of like blade, blunted blade at the at the tip of our axe. Um, and we're in good shape right now, actually. Uh, what I want to do is maybe add a few more details. Like, for example, I'll select these faces right here. Let's select these faces and select that one. And we'll go Control E for an extrusion. And let's see, maybe we can just pull it out along our, uh, yeah. There we go. Nice. We, now we got a blade. Now we got a bevel on our blade. Let's go to our top view. And let's see if we can kind of. Yeah, you know what? This is good. Maybe line it up with the square at the end there. And there we go. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's looking not too shabby, if you don't mind me. I think that looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, I like it. That's looking pretty good. Now, maybe you want to add another detail at the back here. So, for example, maybe you want to make this kind of like a Warhammer. Like, uh, yeah, maybe half axe, half Warhammer. Yeah, let's give it a shot. We'll go Control E to extrude this part out. Right? Uh, yeah, we'll go Control E to extrude this part out. We'll go Control E to extrude it out again. Like, just like that. And you know what? Let's select these faces right here now that are going around our hammer and we'll go control E one more time and instead of doing that we will oh, did I accidentally select something no we will apply some thickness so maybe 0 0.5 yeah 0 0.5 looks good sure yeah that looks that looks really menacing okay yeah I like it yeah sure that's that's horrifying okay cool now we got a cool war hammer at the back of our uh, little, at the back of our little axe, I think Robert Baratheon would be very proud of what we made here. Now let's like this edges, and we will go R for scale. Maybe scale it up like that. Maybe scale it up like this, just so that it looks more like, kind of like a hammer. Maybe go really big there. And now obviously this looks a little weird, so what we might want to do is go edge. Select this edge, right click, control right click, two edge ring utilities, two edge ring split. Select these edges and we'll go control B to bevel this. Maybe turn up the fraction a bit to maybe 0 0.7, maybe 0 0.8. Again, my lucky number. And let's turn up the segments a lot. Oh no, you know what? Uh, mm, yeah, we could do. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. Nah, it's not exactly like, it's not exactly scaling the way I want. So you know what, we'll do it manually. We'll just drop one, two edge loops. Select this edge and we'll go scale and maybe manually bring this in and then maybe manually bring this in and then maybe, you know, manually bring that. Just so that the curvature looks a little more cleaner and nothing too out of the ordinary. Okay, great. Now maybe let's select this face and maybe we can even scale it up like this and go like that, maybe like that. Sure, maybe pull this out even a tiny bit, just like that, just to make the edge, the bat, the axe look a lot more menacing that way. And uh, yeah, there we go. Nice. We got a really cool uh, battle axe thing going. I'm really digging it. Um, yeah, I think maybe we could probably add a few more details. Like for example, let's say we want to, maybe we want to add a spike at the top here, right? So let's go Control E for scale, Q to deselect, R for, for scale. Maybe switch over to our top view and then maybe scale it up like this. Maybe bring it in like that. Yeah, that's good, sure. And then maybe we can do is can D Q to deselect, Control E to extrude again. Maybe extrude this way up like that. 
Okay. Yeah, I like it. I'm liking it so far. I'm liking it. Now, uh, we can do, to make this a point, uh, let's, do, we can do a couple things. Uh, we will, let me think, how are we going to approach this? Okay, we will go into vertex mode and we will go to target weld and we can either do two things. We can simplify the mesh by going like this to merge those two, to go and merge these two and do the same thing here. Merge these, merge these, and merge these, right? Okay. Now, uh, what we could do to make it a point is merge to the center here, just like this. Merge these loops to the center, and there we go. Now we got a pike, kind of a menacing little spike here at the top of our battle axe. That looks really cool. I think that looks really cool. Um, and yeah, nice. I'm digging it. I like it. I like it a lot. Maybe we could even, let's see. Maybe we can even do a little bit more. Let's always see if we can push the envelope a little bit for this. So we'll go control, right click, drop an edge loop right here. Control, right click, drop an edge loop right here. And then let's drop an edge loop right here. And let's select this edge. And let's see if we can, let's see if we bevel it a little bit. We bevel it and then increase the fraction to maybe something like, yeah, you know what? One is probably good. Maybe increase the segments to one. So that we have that way we have one, two. Mm, no, that didn't quite work actually. You know what? Let's do it this way. Let's say I want to add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spikes, right? So if I want to add eight spikes, I'm gonna add an edge loop right here. Edge loop right here. This will be one spike, this will be one spike, this will be one spike. Okay, now let's go two edge ring and split, two edge ring and split, two edge ring and split, two edge ring and split. And you'll see why I'm doing this. It'll all make sense in just a second. Uh, let's select this loop and we'll go control B to just bevel a tiny bit because we want that gap here. I know, you know what? Control B to bevel. Maybe we could turn up the gap. There you go. Uh, we could probably fix this. Um, we could probably fix that by uh, target welding it there, or we can just leave it as is if you want. But uh, yeah, okay, nice. Now let's go face. Let's like this face. It's like this face. It's like this face. Okay, yeah. Let's like these faces. Mm, and we'll go. This is what we'll do. We'll go Control E to extrude, and let's extrude these up. Ooh, looks like we accidentally select the faces in the back. That's not what we wanted. Let's try that again. Let's select these faces. Let's select these faces, and let's select these faces. Make sure nothing else is selected by accident. Maybe turn on our wire mode. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Nothing else is selected. Go back to smooth shading. Let's select these faces, and we'll go Control E. Uh, and we will extrude this out maybe to about here, maybe even a little bit shorter. Okay, that looks good. Now we will do the exact same thing that we did for this spike up here. So let's Q to deselect, let's go to vertex mode, and uh, you know what, let's pull up our target weld tool since we're about to do that anyways. We'll go edge, select this edge, right click, control right click to edge ring and split, just to add an edge loop right there. And then let's go target weld target weld, go to vertex mode, target weld tool, and let's just target weld to the middle point. Yeah, target weld to the middle point right there. There you go, okay, cool. And you know, we could even simplify it even more by like target welding these together, you know what I mean? But it just depends, I guess it depends on how far you wanna take it. Um, honestly, we could have, like frankly, we could have been done this ax a while ago, but I just wanted to add a few details. Anyway, I'm rambling. Um, okay, great. So now we have these kind of little like nubs at the end of our hammer, but I wanna make them spikes. So we'll do the same thing. So in vertex mode, target weld, and let's target weld like this, target weld that, target weld this, target weld that, target weld to here, here, and then here. 
Nice. Oh, and forgot this one. Nice. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Nice. That looks good. Now let's do the same thing here. Like this, like this. Just be careful that you're selecting the right edge and you're target welding to the right edge as well. Let's just go around and target weld all these together. Perfect. And then just the last one. And you go like that. Go like this. This. And you like that. 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 And that. And there we go. Now we got a cool hammer with some menacing, really scary looking spikes, if I'm going to be very honest with you. Maybe we can even scale it down a little bit so that they're not so obstructive. So we'll select just the faces of the spikes that we want. And we'll go R for scale. Maybe scale it in like this. Maybe even scale it in like that. And uh, yeah, great. Uh, you know what? You know what? We'll just leave it. We'll leave it as is. Because actually doing that kind of messes this up. So you know what? We're, we'll leave it. We're getting a little greedy in terms of how far we want to take this thing. But yeah, there we go. We got a nice, really cool looking uh, battle axe that uh, looks really menacing, to be honest with you. Um, hopefully this video is helpful for you in terms of making your own thing. Um, yeah, hopefully you found it helpful. Let me know down below what you want to see next. Uh, yeah, that, honestly, I might even get one of my characters to use one of these because this looks, this looks pretty good. I won't even lie to you. I'm, I'm quite happy with how this turned out. Anyway, uh, yeah, hopefully this video is helpful and I will see you in the next one, okay? Bye. Thanks for watching the video. If you like my content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let me know down below what you want to see next or just check out some of these other great videos. Thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you later.